Hello there. Today, talking a little about cats and other birds. <laughs> uh, I will be updating the motherboard of one of our PCs. The motherboard is broken, so this will just kind of be a replacement for it. Uh, this is something that's quite simple to do these days, because we have a standard case, a standard ATX case, which basically supports any size of motherboard. Uh, important thing to remember that if you have a honestly saying cheap entry gaming PC from some A brand, you can't most likely change the motherboard due to the fact that it's been factory cut to some specific case. But since we have a standard case purchase from a store, we can change the motherboard to it. Do you want to help me out here a little bit? I know you do. The real star. Yeah. What do you think about it? Did I make a good purchase? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I will be just shortly switching to the close-up where I will be removing the old motherboard from the case and installing the new one and giving you points as I go on. But if we unbox this first... Yep. There's the thing that we Never need. <laughs> Manual. The I.O. plate, which goes in the back of, back of the case to cover uh, that there won't be any extra dirt going into the case. And some screws to hold the M2 drives in. And SATA cable. That's We don't really have any SATA devices these days though, so there's no need for this actually. And this is the standard packaging where the motherboards come. So, remove this. Good. Standard ATX motherboard. So, next up I will be removing the old one and moving all the parts like the CPU, graphic card memories, SSDs to this one and showing how that is done. It's quite simple when you know what you're doing and you can't break lot of things. Mm -hmm. I think I could. <laughs> you could. Like I said, I'm a professional. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, switching on the close-up. The graphic card is often attached to the case with one or two screws or some kind of a quick lock mechanism. There is a switch in the motherboard under the graphic card that you need to push down to pop up the graphic card from the motherboard. There is a small clamp on the power cord that you need to push when you pull out the cable. Remember to push down from both ends when releasing the memory sticks from the motherboard. Removing the CPU cooler from the motherboard will be a lot different depending on what kind of a cooler you have. In this one I need to remove the fan so that I can reach the screws that are under it. After I remove the screws I can just lift up the CPU cooler. Remember to remove the power cable of the cooler from the motherboard if your model has such. No I need to remove the installation brackets of the CPU cooler so that I can use them in the new motherboard. This point is also smart to remove the old thermal paste from the CPU. Depending on the motherboard, there can be up to 10 of these screws that you need to open to remove the motherboard from the old case. Once the screws are removed, you can just remove the old motherboard from the case by gently lifting it from the corners. I need to remove the standard cooler sockets because I'm using the old cooler that would fit to these. And once they are removed, I will just put in the old brackets to this motherboard. 
know we can put the thermal paste to the CPU. If you have a water cooler, it is easier to install that after you have put in the motherboard to the new case. But since I'm using this old air, co air cooler, it is easier to do it this way. The first memory stick should always go to the slot that is the nearest to the CPU. And if you have multiple memory sticks, remember to space them out. Installing the M2 drive is very simple. Just slide it in in around 40 degree angle, push it down and screw down with the screws that are coming with the motherboard. Installing the new motherboard to the case, it is important to put in the I.O. shield. If you are installing to an empty case with no power unit, it is easier to install the power cables, the power unit, after you have put in the motherboard to the case. and the new motherboard had same holes in it, I just needed to screw down the screws from the same holes, nothing more. Once the motherboard is connected to the case with the screws, it's time to attach all the cables to it. To be honest, the power and the reset cable are always the most painful to attach. You should always look for the instructions from the manual. The front I.O. connectors always have only one slot in the motherboard where they go, so those are easy to install. Last up, graphic card. Same process as before, just backwards. Nothing fancy there. Thanks for watching guys.